there are 14 facial bones. Most of these bones come in pairs, right and left. The exception is the vomer and the mandible. Let's begin with the paired nasal bones. These two bones are small, flattened bones, uh, somewhat rectangular shaped, and together form what we would call the bridge of the nose. So this is where your sunglasses or eyeglasses rest on your face. The next two are known as zygomatic bones. These two do not articulate with one another, but are on opposite sides of the face. Uh, these are often commonly called your cheekbones. And typically they are much smaller that one, than one would, would think. Um, when we get into the lab, hopefully you will find these. And notice that they don't form your entire cheeks. Um, your cheeks are often more soft tissue as well as other bones that form that region of the face. But these are the two zygomatic bones. They often will um, form, well they will form portions of the orbit as well. The next two are known as maxillae. Uh, these are shown in yellow. These, all, these do articulate with one another as well as they form articulations with other bones like nasal bones and zygomatic bones. They form what we call a portion of our hard palate. We can see that over in this view where we are looking inferiorly up at the skull with the mandible being removed. And we see that the yellow portion here is formed by your maxillae. That is the anterior portion of your hard palate. The palatine bones form the posterior portion of the hard palate. These come together, there's a right and left, and form that posterior portion of the palate. There's a condition called cleft palate. Cleft palate is a developmental uh, defect where these bones fail to come together. This happens typically around weeks 10 to 12 of embryonic development. So failure for these to fuse can cause that condition. We see the vomer forming the inferior portion of the nasal septum. There is one vomer uh, it is often referred to as a plow-shaped bone. That's what vomer means, plow-shaped. Uh, this is a very difficult bone to get the whole uh, shape from this view. So we should be seeing this one again when we look at the nasal septum. The inferior nasal concha, remember we learned about the superior and the middle nasal concha, but the inferior nasal concha are separate bones that provide that increased surface area we see in the nasal cavity. Here's a lateral view of the skull. We again see uh, zygomatic bones, we see the nasal bone, we see maxilla. We also notice on the medial portion of the orbit there's a very small bone called the lacrimal bone. Lacrimal refers to teardrops, and in fact the lacrimal bone forms a very small tunnel in order to drain tears from the eye into the nasal cavity. So you can see a small opening here to drain tears from the eye. So we see this zygomatic bone again, the mandible, the mandible or lower jaw, is the only freely movable bone in the skull. It is the strongest and largest facial bone, and it forms a joint with the temporal bone, known as the temporal mandibular joint, or simply put TMJ. The TMJ is located right here. It is a 
hinge joint, but also planar in that your mouth will open and close like a hinge, but will also slide right to left, forward and backwards as well. So it's a very movable joint, and it happens to be the joint that most commonly dislocates. So quite often we hear about dislocated shoulders, but the TMJ actually dislocates more often than even a shoulder joint. The portion of the mandible that forms the TMJ is known as the mandibular condyle, and it articulates with what's called the mandibular fossa. But recall that the mandibular fossa is the depression in the temporal bone. The mandible has a crown-shaped structure called the coronoid process of the mandible. That's this structure here. It gives a lot of surface in order to attach muscles of mastication uh, to allow us to chew our food. Here's a picture of the nasal septum. So what this will help us do is just look at the three components of the nasal septum one more time. So we have the perpendicular plate. Perpendicular plate is formed by the ethmoid bone. So it's a portion of the ethmoid bone that comes down. So it forms the superior bony portion of the nasal septum. Here is the plow-shaped vomer forming the inferior portion. And then finally we have septal cartilage. So this more anterior portion of the septum is all cartilage. And that often will fracture. Uh, when someone breaks their nose, it doesn't mean that there is bone fractures, but it could mean that it is cartilage that fractures. This also helps us identify that hard palate once again. We have what's called the palatine process of the maxilla and then the palatine bone situated posteriorly. This is a very strange view, but what I hope, what I hope it does is show how those nasal concha really increase the surface area. So you can imagine when air is flowing through this nasal cavity, it's running over a lot of surface covered with warm mucous membranes. And those warm mucous membranes will warm and humidify the air. We see the perpendicular plate coming down from the ethmoid bone, joining the vomer formed on the bottom or inferior portion of the nasal septum. We also see the maxillary sinuses that are paranasal sinuses. We see the ethmoidal sinuses in the ethmoid bone. We even see portions of the frontal sinus in the frontal bone. So this just gives you one more view of how these bones come together and form, whether it's the nasal cavity or orbits, uh, as well as showing you these paranasal sinuses. That also is shown here. This is a, a, another slide just showing these sinuses and their locations. Uh, the function of paranasal sinuses include uh, production of secretions uh, that will ultimately drain into the nasal cavity, uh, resonating chambers in order to intensify and prolong sounds that emanate from your vocal cords. Uh, they also make the skull much lighter uh, than it would be if it was, these were solid bones. And then finally, the bones that have paranasal sinuses, frontal, maxillary, sphenoid, and ethmoid. The last thing I'd like to do in this video is quickly talk about fontanelles and sutures. A fontanelle is a soft spot in a fetal or baby's skull. So this is a drawing of a fetal skull. This is a drawing of an adult skull. You'll notice that in between many of our flat bones of the skull there are membranes. These are the connective tissue membranes that form in order to produce flat bones. If you recall we call that intramembranous ossification. 
we don't completely fuse these bones prior to birth. It allows this fetal skull to fit down the birth canal. So fontanelles are often called soft spots. Uh, they are areas of unossified connective tissue, giving that skull quite a bit of flexibility in order for it to travel down the birth canal. Eventually, those fontanelles will completely ossify and become what we call sutures. A suture is an immovable joint uh, between bones of the skull. The four primary sutures include the coronal suture, the squamous suture, the sagittal suture, and the lambdoid suture. So we want to make sure that we can identify those sutures on the skull.